this set of Snap Circuits videos, we're looking through Projects 548 to Project 577. So pretty much covering all the projects here using the solar panel. So with Project 548, it's the recharge battery. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So it's a pretty simple circuit using our solar panel as our power source. Then we have a switched C5 capacitor, so 470 microfarads, so the energy from our solar panel is going to get stored in our capacitor with our switch set to the on position. And then we have our 10,000 ohm resistor feeding our meter here, which is connected with the solar panel and our capacitor. So right now the capacitor is not in the circuit because we have it turned off. And you can see some current flowing through our meter there because our solar panel here is taking in ambient light and converting it into electricity. And as I cover the solar panel, you can see that I can reduce the amount of electricity going through our meter there by limiting the amount of light entering our solar cell. So you can see the deflection on the meter as I do that. Now I'm going to add the capacitor into the circuit and that's going to start charging the capacitor up from our solar cell there. And you'll see our meter deflect down and then slowly rise up as that capacitor charges it. Turn it on here. So you see it dip down and then our meter is slowly rising up as that capacitor charges up. Because that's taking most of the current from the solar cell before it gets to our meter. So now that we've got the capacitor in the circuit, you can tell it's pretty much charged up. And if we start covering up the solar cell, you see that our meter deflects down slower than with the capacitor out of the circuit. Same thing with it charging back up. And that's because the capacitor, as the title suggests in this case, is acting as a rechargeable battery. So the energy from the solar cell is getting stored in the capacitor when the switch is set to on, so it's in the circuit. And by doing that, we can take the energy that we get from our solar cell and store it in the capacitor. And then it's that what the capacitor then ends up doing is supplying energy in the circuit when less current comes from our solar cell because we cover it up. And thus it begins discharging and then recharging. And if we take the capacitor back out of the circuit, then you see it's just the solar panel in the circuit now. So that's how Project 548 works. So now we're going to move on to Project 549, which is solar batteries. So here we are, Project 549 solar batteries. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. Just a little bit modified, but still works the same way. So we have our solar panel acting as our input. We have our press switch and our D1 red LED. So this circuit is pretty simple. Our solar panel is going to provide current to our LED and the press switch is basically what allows us to complete the circuit. Press the press switch. Not sure how well the camera is picking it up here, but the red LED is lighting up just from the ambient light that I've got showing here in the room. Now I'm going to take a flashlight here and I'm going to shine it on the solar cell so we can get a bit more current there. And now you see that LED lights up nice and bright because we got a pretty good amount of light shining on our solar cell and so we can get quite a bit of current through our red LED there. Again, making it light up nice and bright. So that's pretty much all there is for Project 549. So now we're going to move on to Project 550, which is solar control. So here we are with Project 550, the solar control. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. Now the circuit is modified a little bit. I'll explain when we get to that. So we have our solar cell here. It goes to our slide switch, then goes through our red LED into the base of an NPN transistor and the NPN transistor is controlling in this case our six and a half volt lamp. Now normally the two and a half volt lamp would be here with a three volt battery case. I've modified the circuit because number one my two and a half volt lamp is burned out and I'm also using the six volt side of my B6 adapter here but the circuit will still perform the same with the two and a half volt lamp and a single 
battery box like this. So, again, our MPN transistor is controlling our 6 volt lamp, which is being powered by our 6 volt source here. And again, our solar cell is basically feeding the gate or base of our NPN transistor here, which then is controlling that. And we can see the status through our red LED. So, if I turn the slide switch to on, nothing's really happening because the ambient light is not strong enough to turn on our NPN transistor there and get our 6 volt lamp to light, nor do we have enough current going through for even our red LED there to light up. So what I will do is I'll take a flashlight and if we shine it on our solar cell you can see that our red LED lights up and our 6 volt lamp also begins to light. So this is allowing enough current to turn on our NPN transistor there enough to where their 6 volt lamp lights up. Now I can make this flashlight brighter and if I make the flashlight nice and bright, now you see our red LED glows nice and bright and so does our 6 volt lamp because now I've got plenty of current going into the base of the NPN transistor there to turn it on quite strongly. And by doing that we get plenty of current to go through our 6 volt lamp so it lights up nice and bright. And again the additional current is being represented by our red LED there which is also lighting up nice and bright. And if we turn off the slides, which of course we disconnect the solar cell from the circuit, thus not allowing the NPN transistor to turn on any. Turn it on, and it of course comes back. And by adjusting the brightness of our light, you can see we can also change how strong that NPN transistor turns on. So, that is Project 550. So now we're going to move on to project 551 which is the solar resistance meter and also we're going to do project 552 the solar diode tester so here we have project 551 the solar resistance meter and there it is in the book and here it is on the board so again we've got our solar panel again acting as our input it goes through our meter with our slide switch disconnecting the circuit and then we have our variable resistor because we want to set a baseline for our meter there to see how different components react so I've got the variable resistor set all the way at the top so that we've got about nine showing on our meter there so that's our reference point with no loads attached to it so we can take our three snap off here and we can start testing different components to see how they behave with adding resistance to the circuit. So take our 1000 ohm resistor for instance. I put that on there and we see we're just a little bit below the 9 mark there. Let's try 10,000 ohms. Now you see we got kind of six being represented on the meter there because this is ten times as high as resistor two, which is only 1,000 ohms. Now we could take something like a capacitor. Let me flip it this way. Put the capacitor on there, and it will start up high, and then it will slowly go less and less deflection on the meter because we are charging up the capacitor. And now this capacitor is essentially fully charged, so I can short it out. And we can repeat the process, charging it back up again. And again, as it charges, there's less and less current going through it. That's why we see less deflection on the meter. And we can also do other things like a motor. And the motor is pretty close to a three snap because it's got basically full current going through it even though there's not enough to make it show that it's turning. So you can test out various components on the system here. So that's basically Project 551. Now Project 552 is the solar diode tester. So for that we're going to take diodes 1, 2, and 3, put them in line on there and see how they behave in the circuit. So we'll take diode 1 here 
and you can see if the camera is picking it up that diode one is lighting up a little bit there and we've got about six represented on the meter if we take diode two our green one this one is much more faint than the red LED is it is lighting up there as you see we're just a sh shy away from the five mark there so there's a little less current going through our green LED than our red LED. And then we take diode 3 here, which is not a light emitting diode, it's just a regular diode here. Put that in the circuit. And now we're representing about 8 on the meter because we don't have as big of a drop across it as we do with our light emitting diodes. So that's project 552. Now we're going to move on to project 553, which is the solar NPN transistor tester. So here we are with project 553, the solar NPN transistor. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So it's pretty similar to the previous project. We just put our NPN transistor there in line, along with our press switch to provide power to the base. So when we turn our slide switch on, we see no deflection on the meter because obviously the NPN transistor is not turned on to allow current to flow through. But if I press the press switch, we get deflection on our meter. And that's because when I hold down the press switch, energy is going through the solar cell into the base of the NPN transistor, allowing the NPN transistor to turn on, and then we get current through the collector and emitter. And then it flows through the circuit, and we see that on our meter there. And of course if I release the press switch it turns off the transistor and no more current flows through the circuit. So that's project 553. Now project 554 is the solar PNP transistor. So let's see if I can reconfigure the circuit real quick without having to do too much. So pull this away, put the PNP in there. falling on the ground here and then we have our first switch which we'll let's see put like so making sure which way things go here and then there and this goes here. So that's project 554. So now we got the PNP transistor in place in the circuit there. So you turn the slide switch on. Again, nothing is going to happen because the PNP transistor is not turned on. But when I press the press switch, our PNP transistor comes on because now, again, unlike the NPN, which was using our positive voltage, we're using ground to activate our PNP. So we do that, our PNP transistor turns on, allowing current to flow through its collector and emitter, and we can see that represented on our meter. So that's project 554. So now project 555 is solar cell versus battery. So here we are at Project 555, solar cell versus battery. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. So we've got our solar cell with our slide switch turning that on and off. Our meter going through our variable resistor, which is being supplemented by a 10,000 ohm resistor. And then we have a battery box that I'm using to use this time, along with our press switch. And with our battery box, we hold down our press switch and we move our variable resistor because we want to have something as a reference on our meter. In this case, we want the meter to deflect at the 5 mark. Because what that will do is that will tell us that there's whatever voltage the batteries are, generally around 3 volts. And then we're going to compare that with our solar cell. So turn the slide switch on. And you see now we've got the solar panel connected through our circuit here. And the meter is deflecting a little bit less than 5. So there's a little more voltage in our batteries than what our solar cell is currently getting with the ambient light here. So if I press the press switch, 
you can see we have greater voltage in our batteries because the meter deflects higher. Now if we introduce more light into our solar cell, you see now our needle deflects up. In fact, let me put this on even brighter. So our needle deflects up quite a ways and of course when I press the press switch the needle goes down and that's because we have more voltage in our solar cell and because these are rechargeable batteries in my battery box here we're actually charging the batteries up as long as I'm holding down the press switch because the greater voltage from the solar cell is now going into the pack. Take it away, it goes down. So. That's project 555, so now we're going to move on to project 556, which is solar cell versus battery 2. So here we are at project 556, solar cell versus battery 2. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we've simplified down the previous circuit to where now the battery and the solar cell are basically connected together in the same circuit, switched by our slide switch there. And again, we can see our current and voltage on our meter here and then we also got a limitation with our 10,000 ohm resistor. So if we turn on the slide switch you notice the meter doesn't really deflect at all and that's because there isn't any kind of energy transfer going around because there's not enough voltage on our solar cell to exceed what our batteries are putting out. Now if we put a strong light on our solar cell you see our meter now deflects up and that's because we're increasing the voltage on the solar cell more than what the batteries are so if the batteries are like three volts for instance and the solar cell in this case may be putting out like six or seven volts and because these are rechargeable we're again now recharging the batteries through our solar cell because the higher voltage is transferring in to our battery box here So that's how Project 556 works. Now we're going to move on to Project 557, which is the solar music. So here we are at Project 557, the solar music. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we've got our solar cell doing the battery input. We got our 10,000 and 5.1k resistors in series together with our meter here which is basically being used as a measurement to show how much power the solar cell has if it can run the circuit or not then our slide switch turns everything on and off it goes to our music ic and we use our whistle chip here to restart the music ic because it's on its repeat function so we can just tap that to restart the music ic and then its output goes into our transformer which is stepping down and going to our speaker because by stepping the transformer down we can get more current to our speaker so that the audio is a bit louder because again we're not getting a lot of input power with our solar cell so with our meter we want to see about seven or greater on the meter because that will ensure that we can run the circuit now apparently we don't quite have that with enough ambient light because it's reading about five so if we try to run the circuit with the switch on the music I see doesn't really play. We kind of just get a weird static sound out of the speaker there. So I'm going to use my flashlight on its nice bright setting there. And see now we're almost at the 10 mark, so we should have plenty of voltage to operate our circuit. And you can hear our music I see playing there through our speaker. And it's all being supplied via our solar cell. And you can see that our meter deflects downward as some current is being used to drive the music I see in speaker. And again, we can restart it with our whistle chip. And you can have some fun with this circuit by adjusting the amount of light going into our solar cell. Because if we lower the voltage, then we start messing up how the music I see plays. And it starts to sound stranger and stranger as less current and voltage get to the circuit.
So that is how Project 557 works. And now we're going to move on to Project 558, which is the Solar Sounds Combo. So here we have Project 558, the Solar Sounds Combo. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So it's similar to the previous project, but now instead of the music IC being the sole IC that's providing music, we now have the alarm IC and Space War IC being mixed together and going out to our speaker there. And we have our photoresistor to help change the various Space War IC sounds that come out of it. Now, this circuit, of course, is going to require more voltage than the previous one because now we have two ICs that we're driving with the solar cell, not just one. So now the meter wants about nine on there to work effectively. So we get it about the same there what we had before. So we turn our slides with John. And you can hear our siren sound effect from the alarm I see. And you can hear the space war I see drop out if I take my finger or put it on the photoresistor there. Taking away the space where IC comes back on. And you can see that reflected on our meter there when that IC turns on. And like before, depending on the amount of light coming in, that also affects how well the circuit operates. So that's how Project 558 works. Now we're going to move on to Project 559, which is the solar alarm. So here we are, Project 559, the solar alarm. There it is on the book, and here it is on the board. So we get our solar cell providing input. Again, we get our little setup here with our two resistors, a 10,000 ohm and 5.1k resistors in the series with our meter to kind of again act as a voltage measurement to know that our solar cell is providing enough input and we just have our slide switch turning on and off our alarm IC which is going through a 100 ohm resistor outputting to our speaker so we take our flashlight and we make sure we got about nine or so on our meter there and we turn our slide switch on and we get our little siren sound effect coming out of our speaker there And you can see the load that's on the solar cell because our meter is deflected to around six or so. And as the alarm I see is turning on and off, you see our meter bouncing up and down a little bit there. And again, if we take the light away, the alarm I see still works, but the speaker has less and less amplitude so we don't hear it as well and that's because again there's less voltage and current getting to our speaker there when we take the light away as referenced by our meter so that's project 559 so now we're going to do project 560 which is the better solar alarm so what I'm going to do for this is take this out this back and we're going to put our transformer into the circuit like so there with our speaker put the speaker there attach this point attach this point here and let's see put that there and one of these now, we'll do the same thing again, but see this time we've got our transformer stepping down to our speaker, so we're actually going to get more current to our speaker by using the transformer. So we'll turn the circuit on this time. And you notice that we got the same siren sound effect, but now it's louder, because by stepping down with the transformer, it doesn't take as much power to drive the speaker.
So that's Project 560. So now we're going to move on to Project 561, which is the photo solar alarm. So now I'm going to take the transformer back out of the circuit here, along with our speaker. Let's see. We're going to replace that with our photoresistor and our whistle chip. So let's see. Actually, we need to put these here. Those there, then our whistle chip, then our photoresistor. This part goes here, and then actually, where does that go? Oh, we have this. Oh, that's interesting. They don't uh, they don't show it in the manual that it needs that spacer right here. There we are. So now we got this set up. So now we're going to use our photoresistor in the circuit. So I'll put some light on there. So we need the meter showing above six for this. And again, you hear our siren still, but now it's coming out of our whistle chip, and we use our photoresistor to control the output on our whistle chip. So by covering up the photoresistor, we basically stop the output from the alarm IC. Now I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but that whining that you're hearing from the whistle chip here, not the alarm IC siren, but the whining that you're hearing when this is covered up, it's actually coming from the flashlight, believe it or not. And I may actually do this in a separate video just for an interesting thing about this flashlight. Because this flashlight is LED, it's actually turning on and off really quick. So it's actually producing an AC signal that the solar cell is translating into an audible sound. Just a little interesting quirk with this LED flashlight with how it's being driven. So that is Project 561, so now we're going to move on to Project 562, which is the Solar Space War. So here we have Project 562, the Solar Space War. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So it's similar to previous projects, but this time we're using the Space War IC, outputting to our transformer, driving our speaker, and we have our press switch and slide switch to control the various sounds and mix them together from the space war I see. And again we have our meter to tell us how much voltage and current the solar cell can supply, but this time I'm going to use my little incandescent spotlight. This will eliminate the noise or interference I get from the LED flashlight because of how that one works. So use my spotlight on there and you can see our meter comes up. Use a switch right here, a machine gun sound effect. And we can, of course, mix the sounds together. And like previously, if we don't have enough light, the space where I see is not going to work well. So that's how Project 562 works, and now we're going to move on to Project 563, which is the Solar Music Alarm Combo. So here we are with Project 563, the Solar Music Alarm Combo. There it is in the book, and here's on the board. So it's like, again, previous projects, but this time we've got the music I see feeding our alarm I see, mixing them together, and then it goes into our transformer, which is outputted to our speaker. Again, we have our meter to measure 
the output on our solar cell to make sure we have enough power. So I'll use my spotlight and get that up to where it needs to be and then we'll turn on the circuit. And so you hear the music IC playing and you also hear the alarm IC siren mixed in with it. And then it finishes playing. And because there is no repeat or anything like that on the music IC, it does not automatically loop. So we have to turn the circuit on and off to start it again. And sometimes I gotta get this just right there to reset. So give it a few seconds. See if we can get it to come back here. That is how Project 563 works, and now we're going to look at Projects 564 and 565, which is the Solar Music Space War combo. So here we are at Projects 564 and 565, the Solar Music Space War combo 1 and 2. There it is on the book, and here it is on the board. So we're making use of our previous circuits for the solar cell with our meter monitoring its voltage. Our transformer stepping down for our speaker for output with our slide switch to turn the whole circuit on and off. And this time we're using our music IC, which is then powering our space war IC and then feeding out. So every time the music IC is playing, it activates our space war IC and we get our sounds from that. And then every time this music IC repeats because of how it's connected up here, the space war IC changes its output. So let me get my spotlight, put it on there and turn the circuit on. So we got one sound effect coming from the Space 4 IC. And now you hear it's changed to another sound because the music IC has looped again. And then when the music IC starts over like it just did, now it's playing a different sound through the Space 4 IC. And you can tell I'm varying the light just a little bit because I'm not quite holding it steady and you can hear the output waver a little bit. So that's how Project 564 works. Now Project 565, we're going to take the speaker out and we're going to replace it with the whistle chip. So let me take this out. And I'll see if I can fit the whistle chip in there. It's going to probably be pretty tight. No, it actually fits in there okay. So I'll put the whistle chip in there. And with the whistle chip, we won't need as much light on the solar cell because the whistle chip uses less current than the speaker does. So we should still get pretty good output here. Now, I don't know how well the uh, camera's picking it up, but the whistle chip is putting audio out. Again, it's just not as loud as the speaker, but the whistle chip is working. And again, it continues to cycle through the various space where I sees as this music I see turns on and off. So that's Project 565, so now we're going to move on to Project 566, which is the Solar Periodic Lights and Periodic Lights 2. So here we are at Project 566, the Solar Periodic Lights. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So like previous projects, our solar panel here is with our meter set up, so we can see how much power the solar panel is providing. Our slide switch turns, of course, the whole circuit. And we have our alarm IC and our music IC. So our alarm IC has our red LED feeding into that. But then its output also goes over to our music IC, turning our music IC on and off. And we see output from that represented through our green LED that's being limited by our 100 ohm resistor. So if I take my spotlight and shine line on there so we know that we got plenty of power available from our solar panel turn the circuit on and you see that our 
red LED lights up and it flashes and then when it dims down you see that our green LED momentarily flashes too and you can see the changing amount of current there in the circuit on our meter as it's operating. So our alarm IC is putting out an output that we're seeing on our red LED and that output is turning on and off our music IC which is then momentarily being seen through our green LED there. So that's essentially how Project 566 works. Now Project 567 we're going to take the three snap away and instead we're going to just put a number two snap I believe right across the resistor there. Let me make sure. So we're going to put a two snap across that. And by doing that, the alarm IC and the music IC's outputs will be separated. So the alarm will not be driving the music IC. It will have its own source. So the flashing should be different. Turn it on here. Get enough light there. And so you can see that there's a different pattern there on our alarm IC and music IC. So this is essentially how Project 567 works. Now we're going to move on to Project 568, which is the Solar AM radio transmitter. So here we are at Project 568, the Solar AM radio transmitter. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So again, we still have our solar panel with our meter monitoring the voltage and current across it. So I switch to turn the circuit on and off, but we've got our AM radio transmitter set up here. So we're using our alarm IC for its input, and then the output is being transmitted through our green LED, so we'll see that visually. But then we'll also have the antenna, which is sending the audio out to our little Sony cassette player up here with my external speaker hooked up to it, so we'll be able to hear it over the AM band. And then we have our variable capacitor there which I've already pre-tuned so we don't have to mess around with tuning the circuit to find the frequency that we can hear it on. And then the alarm I see is being powered from two spots. It's got a constant on number one and then we have our NPN transistor here that we can turn on and off with our photoresistor. But most of the time it's going to just be running from this one here. If we want to change the sound we pretty much unplug this and make it run from that. So, turn our speakers on here. So, there's nothing broadcasting on the AM frequency that I've got there in the vicinity. Bring our spotlight here so we can get our meter up. And then we just simply turn the circuit on. So we got that sound coming from our alarm I see up and down going through our speaker there. And we disconnect this. You see now it's using our transistor. So that is Project 568. So now we're going to look at Project 569, which is the low light noise maker. 
So here we are at project number 569, the low light noisemaker. There it is in the book and here's on the board. So again, still have our solar cell with our meter to measure the voltage and current. We have our slide switch to the circuit off and then we've got a small oscillator circuit over here using our PNP and NVN transistors tied together, switching on and off through our transformer which is outputting to our speaker and we've got our 100,000 ohm resistor going into the base of our NPN and our base of our NPN and output of our PNP are connected together via our whistle chip. Now for this again it's called a low light noise maker so in our meter here we want the needle higher than 5 but below 10 so in this case I can't use my flashlight or the spotlight because that would produce too much voltage on our solar cell but we also don't want it too low because if it's too much voltage the circuit can't oscillate or will oscillate too fast we can't hear it of course if it's too low the circuit's not going to work right so we turn it on you can hear a noise being emanated from both our whistle chip and speaker and if you take your hand and you cover up the solar cell a little bit changing the voltage you also change how the oscillating circuit operates And of course, again, you can't use a strong light because you can't hear the circuit oscillate. So it needs to have lower ambient light. In this case, I've got an incandescent light from my track light that I have above the workbench here. So there's three, well, two individual track lights on it now because one of them is burned out. It's aiming down at this, providing the light that you see here. So that's how that works. Now what we're going to do is move on to, let's see, 570, which is low light noise maker 2. So for that, we're going to replace the whistle chip with the 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And by introducing more capacitance, as you know from previous oscillating circuits, we change the frequency, tending to lower it. So I'm going to 0.1 microfarad cap there, and now we'll turn it on. And it's oscillating at a lower frequency. There's actually a little more voltage and current showing on our meter based on our solar cell. And I don't know how well the camera's microphone here is picking up the sound from that. But again, you see, as we change the output voltage on our solar cell there, we see it reflected on our meter. So that's how Project 570 works on Project 571. Let's see. Okay, so now we're going to up the capacitance even more. We're going to use our 10 microfarad capacitor. And I believe what we've seen from previous projects is when we use the 10 microfarad capacitor, it reduces the oscillation so much that the circuit just clicks on and off instead of giving us a constant, you know, tone. So let's see. And again, if any of the camera's picking that up or not, it's doing a doing something about this rate. So it is making a clicking sound. And I can see it on the meter here if the camera's picking it up or not, but as it's clicking the meters needle there is vibrating with the clicking and if I start to again to cover up the solar cell 
it actually begins oscillating a little faster, so the ticking gets faster. So that's Project 571, so now we're going to move on to Project 572, which is the solar oscillator. So here we are at Project 572, the solar oscillator. There it is in the book. Here it is on the board. So again, I'm using the overhead light here, because again, with this oscillating circuit, I can't use the spotlight stuff, because we don't want too much voltage coming out of our solar cell. Well, we've moved our meter up to here now instead of where down because we need a space here for our transformer. Again, using our NBN and PNV transistors tied together, along with our 10 microfarad capacitor, 100 microfarad capacitor, 1000 ohm resistor, and our variable resistor to help adjust the oscillation. And then we have a red LED, which may not be visible here, but very slightly you can see it flashing if you pay attention. So, we turn on the circuit. And we get kind of a very high ticking sound. And we can adjust the rate of that oscillation with the variable resistor. So going down slows it down. If we push it up, it speeds it up. And we can see the deflection on our meter there as the oscillation changes. Now because it's so quiet, I will try to bring the camera in here near the speaker so we can hear it as I change it. So that is how Project 572 works. Now Project 573, we're going to take our 10 microfarad cap out and we're going to replace them with our 0 0.1 microfarad and then our 0 0.02 microfarad caps because when we reduce the capacitance like this, instead of increasing it, we uh, end up making the oscillation faster when we decrease the capacitance. So we turn the circuit on now. And that's probably a little more audible for the camera where it is. So that's with our 0.1 microfarad cap. So now let's make it oscillate even faster by reducing the capacitance even more. Put our 0.02 microfarad capacitor in the circuit. So that is how project number 573 works. So now we're going to move on to project 574, which is the daylight SCR lamp. So here are project 574, the daylight SCR lamp. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we've got our solar cell with our meter again monitoring it. And all the solar cell is doing is going through our press switch and our 1000 ohm resistor into the base of our SCR here to control the SCR while the SCR is powering our 6 volt lamp in this case again because I don't have a working 2.5 volt lamp 
with our 6 volt supply and then we have our switch to turn off the whole SCR portion. So when we turn the slide switch on, obviously the SCR hasn't been triggered so our 6 volt lamp stays off and you see that from our meter we have plenty of voltage on our solar cell there because of the overhead light. So if I press the press switch you see that our meter momentarily went down there so I pull the press switch down and that connects our solar cell through the gate of our SCR there, triggering our SCR, turning it on, and thereby turning on our 6 volt lamp. And because it's an SCR, as long as there's current flowing through here, the SCR stays on until we turn off the slide switch. Of course, if we turn it back on, the SCR has reset until we activate it again and turn on our 6 volt lamp. Now, if there is not enough light hitting our solar cell, well, if there's not enough light hitting our solar cell, we don't have enough voltage and current to be able to trigger the gate of our SCR there. Now, if I hold this down and slowly let some light in, and you see we got just enough there when our meter bumped up to have just enough voltage and current there to trigger our SCR and thus turn on our 6 volt lamp. So that is how project number 574 works. And now we're going to look at project 575, which is solar bird sounds. So here we are at project 575, solar bird sounds. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we've got another oscillating circuit here making use of our NPN transistor. Got a 100 microfarad capacitor and our 0.2 microfarad capacitor and a 0.1 microfarad capacitor plus our 100,000 and 1,000 ohm resistors and then all our output goes into our transformer which is then stepped down to output to our speaker. So for this I'm going to need the spotlight again because we need to have a sufficient amount of voltage and power on our solar cell and I turn the circuit on. The circuit begins oscillating at a fairly high pitch. And just slight variations in the lighting there does alter the circuit, so it does need quite a bit of light on our solar cell for this to work. So that's project 575. So project 576 is Solar Bird Sounds 2. So here we have project 576, the Solar Bird Sounds 2. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we moved our meter back to our original position like we had in previous projects. And we again have another oscillator circuit here with our NPN transistor being supplemented with our 0.02 .02 microfarad and 0.1 microfarad capacitors along with our 10,000 ohm resistor and it's all creating an oscillating circuit that feeds into our transformer stepping it down to output through our speaker. So again I'll take my spotlight make sure we're getting enough voltage current for our solar cell there and we turn the circuit on And we get a bit of a different noise from the previous project with its configuration now. And again, it's sensitive on the light going into our solar cell just like the previous project. So that's project 576, and now we're going to look at project 577, the SCR solar bomb sounds. So here we are, project 577, the SCR solar bomb sounds. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. 
So we have again our usual solar setup with our meter to monitor it. Our output from our space war IC going into our transformer and then being stepped down to come out of our speaker. Our slide switch that turns the circuit on and off and we're using our SCR to provide power to our space war IC being triggered with our press switch and then we have our 1000 ohm resistor off to the side here to help with some current control. So we take our light and shine it on our solar cell so that again make sure we have enough voltage and current to run it and then we turn on our slide switch. And again we turn our slide switch on nothing happens because the SCR hasn't been triggered so our space war IC does not get any power. But when I press the press switch that triggers the SCR on its gate there causing it to turn on and then it provides power to our space war IC. And as long as there's power going through the circuit the SCR stays active until we turn off the slide switch. Turn it back on, the SCR resets until we trigger it again. And again, it will stay on as long as there's power in the circuit. So that's it for Project 577, and that concludes this set of Snap Circuits videos. So here we are at Project 576, the Solar Bird Sounds 2. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. So we moved our meter back to where it usually was from the previous projects. Again we got another oscillator circuit using our NPN transistor. Our two capacitors, the 0 0.02 microfarad and 0 0.1 microfarad. We also have our... Where the hell did you come from? Bug.